Whoa, what? Yeah, it's been a little while since I have posted a video. I decided to, you know, take a short break, but I'm back. So a lot of you guys know that I'm obviously a videographer. I shoot lots of videos, not just for me, but for other people, clients, things like that. I'm also a photographer, I guess. I never really consider myself a photographer. Over the years, I've definitely taken my fair share of photos and I love shooting photos. I mean, like this guy. What? The day and night shot from the same position. What? And I like to use all kinds of different types of cameras to take photos. Look at that. What do you think that was shot on? Huh? That was shot on an iPhone 6S Plus. It was old then. I've really been getting into the instant film, or Integra film as it's technically called, Polaroids and Fujis. I've just been diving deep into the instant photography camera world and I want to share a lot of my opinions and thoughts and tutorials on how to use it because it's a lot of fun and there really isn't a ton of content being currently made for it. There was a lot of it a few years ago but it seemed to have slowly died off and I want to keep it going because this stuff is fun. So I have a lot of cameras that I'm gonna be throwing at you guys in the coming weeks. So let's take a look at what we're gonna be talking about today. So today's camera of choice is the Lomography Instant Square. Yeah. So what makes this thing really unique? So this shoots two film stocks. This shoots the Instax Square film from Fuji, but also it shoots the Mini as well. This has a removable back that is freaking cool. But before we dive into a lot more of that, my thoughts and opinions on this camera, which I've got lots of thoughts on this that I want to share with you. Before we do that, let's uh, travel back in time to a past Chris unboxing this guy because this does come with some awesome things so take it away me from the past all right let's get this baby unboxed i'm dying to turn this out there she blows this thing is displayed and packed like nothing i have ever seen before it doesn't come with a lid it lifts up like so and you're presented with the extra backing because you do have to take the back off and replace it with the other one if you want to shoot the two types of film but let's get this thing out of the box here is the camera Ooh, nice. and we get these which I'm actually honestly this is a nice touch I really like this we'll get into that too I'm pretty excited about that oddly enough and we get some manuals they did a really good job at, at the aesthetics of all of this this was a nice little added bonus I like this type of stuff look at this these are examples of what you can do and these were all taken with this camera and then on the back it talks about random stuff like a little inspiration to get out there and shoot i appreciate when companies add that little extra flair to their products because that's what i do i think maybe it's just me maybe i'm just insane let me know in the comments am i insane let me know please oh yeah look at all these little bonus gifts you get with this thing these are for your pictures and then you have little stands for your pictures that you take just little sticky tacks magnet backs stick it on the back of your print and you got a little picture for your fridge and little clippy clips put it on your pictures and make little collages out of them and hang them on the wall they got a little hole in the middle as well as this little case for your selfie lens so you can take portrait shots of yourself or close-up subjects and it comes with these little tiny little filters for the flash all right the main event the camera itself all right this thing i gotta say is pretty beautiful i'm attracted to this in a uh unique way and usually i'm attracted to humans but the, for this it's uh something special uh, i can't really explain it it's weird what feels like leather but it's probably not leather it's probably like a faux fox leather type thing but wow and then on the side you have little led indicators for counting down your shots all right one thing that's worth noting about this camera if you buy it you probably have this ahead of time is the batteries it's not double a's it's not triple a's it's not c batteries it takes a unique battery that's typically not used in stuff it takes these to power the camera oh it doesn't oh no it doesn't take these batteries oh no i totally lied i swear that was for those look at that doesn't it look like these batteries oh man all right it takes cr2 batteries damn it <laughs> and i have shot oh my gosh countless <laughs> look at them all i've shot a lot of film 
However, I haven't shot any of the Instax mini film yet. So shortly, I'm gonna take you out into the field and shoot some Instax mini film. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the results are gonna be the same, but you just never know. But before we do that, I wanna talk about the square. And I gotta tell you, man, this stuff is awesome. I love shooting on this, but there are some negative side effects that you have to worry about with this camera. And that's mainly because of the atrocious viewfinder. This thing sucks with the big S and like 18 of them as well. <sighs> yeah, like that. I'm going to be scanning these in to show you guys, uh, but my scanner sucks too. So uh, the quality of the pictures aren't going to be as good as they are in person. This thing takes some sharp pictures due to the glass lens that is inside so when you look through the viewfinder and you frame up you kind of have to turn it to the left a little bit to compensate there is a little uh, guide if you will on the inside of that to help you frame kind of bottom right corner uh, but once you learn how to get, oh, compensate for this thing oh boy is it is a treat to shoot with this picture is oh my gosh so good but in person this thing is so sharp so crispy i wonder if i can get a good focus of it for you guys to look at look at that oh yeah it's way better than my scanner <laughs> it is beautiful however the sky wasn't uh it was gloomy that day which was a bummer because typically check this out look at those blues oh my gosh it's so nice so you can get some really amazing shots with with this camera it's just again the only real downside to this thing is the stupid viewfinder it is atrocious but if you compensate for it you can get some excellent excellent photos you have a little bit of manual control with this camera too that's how you're able to get some of these really nice blue skies uh, typically on some of the other F fuji cameras you don't get that much control you kind of have to do a little bit of guesswork on that and a lot of times those skies are going to be blown out like this one i took this with the fuji mini 9 uh, in seattle from a hotel room and it was a nice blue sunny sky day and uh, it just wiped because of the overexposure. This camera you have a little bit more control so when you open up by default the flash is on you can actually just press it and it will turn it off and then below it you have a double exposure option. Down here you have exposure compensation so by default when you turn it on it's just at its default so you can press it once it will add a little brightness to the exposure and you press it again and it will underexpose it just a little bit. I can't remember how many stops the difference it is it might be one stop each. Now it is it has an automatic shutter button which is super cool it has a light meter in the front and it will gauge the light and how fast the shutter should go off but you can press it once and now it's in bulb mode more on that in just a second and down here you have a timer mode super helpful for selfies and group shots so to actually turn this thing on there's not a button you just grab the edge right here bloop, pull it out just like so now one thing to keep in mind the button to take the picture is right here and it's in a spot right where you're gonna be opening it so be careful don't have your finger on the button and take a shot so every time i open it i just keep my fingers down here at the bottom and then do that so that my fingers are nowhere near that button and to close it this bar all you have to do is you press it in and then you close it the one thing i do have concerns over but it hasn't been an issue as of yet this little knob right here uh, adjusts the focus distance you slide it up and down however when it's closed it sticks out and it's just plastic and i'm afraid that's just going to snap off over time i haven't had any problems with it as of right now but you never know what the future may hold sliding it in and out of bags it could be an issue this has a shutter remote yeah <laughs> hidden right inside it so you're not going to lose it however it doesn't click in place very well it falls out pretty easily i pulled this out of my bag been shooting it, and i noticed this was missing i freaked out for a minute it's just in my bag and luckily it just fell out there it doesn't stay in very well and that could be improved but this thing is really fun to do because if you're in a super dark environment maybe at night and want to do some light streaks uh, or light painting of any kind or just long exposures you can do that with this camera so you press the button one time and then what will happen is the shutter will just stay open until you press the button again and then it closes and then you can get some really nice long exposures i've done it inside that way no flash you can actually get some normal looking shots in a dark environment as long as you're on a tripod so this picture here i shot inside with a long exposure on a tripod yeah it's pretty cool you can be pointing this remote at the back or the front, which is super cool. Uh, and then it also has a little selfie mirror, but you know, good luck trying to line yourself up in that. 
One of the neat things it has is what they're calling the splitzer, and you can split your photos and take double exposures with it, which is interesting. I've been messing around with it a little bit, and I haven't quite mastered it yet, but you can get some cool shots, and I have some ideas on how I can eventually, once I get it down, some neat, neat things. All right, so <laughs> I got cut in real quick because I shot all those photos, and you've been using this camera, but there's one thing I forgot to really include in this review, and that's the pictures of people. I think that's kind of important. Every shot I've done has been of like objects, like buildings or landscape shots. So I think I need to show you what like skin tones look like and actual people. That's probably what you guys are gonna be using it for. So I have uh, recruited a special person. You can hear her. We got Callie, the lovely, the lovely Callie. Can you even see you? There we are. Yeah. All right, cool. There we are. So we're so we're gonna shoot so just a couple of photos right now. So to change the back, it's pretty easy. Right down here in the corner, pull it down all the way down like that, and then it pops up, and then you slide the whole thing out of the socket. Yeah, it's starting to clear up a little bit. It's kind of overcast, which isn't the best to shoot instant film because the sky has just become like super white. But it's starting to clear up a little bit. Let's see how I frame this up because I'm shooting the mini and the viewfinder is set for square. So I have to really lean to the right side of this. Hopefully I can get something framed up. You do not shake these, by the way. Don't shake your film. Since that was the first shot I have done with this on the mini, I'm gonna wait for it to develop to verify framing. Oh my gosh, okay, it's already starting to develop. So it's way off. Interesting. That one's probably not gonna come out that great. Not, not confident. Framing on this is so stupid, it sucks. This camera's already really difficult to get things framed up in, but when you put the mini back on, it's a lot more difficult. Insects mini film, I'm probably gonna phase it out anyway. I like the square and wide film a lot better. Man, that wide film, that's probably my ultimate favorite to shoot with. The pictures you can get out of the wide film, oh my God, it's so freaking good. For everyone asking in the comments below what I'm doing walking and not riding the one wheel, do I still have it? Yeah, of course I still have my one wheel. However, this quarantine has really not taken well to me. And uh, yeah, so I need some exercise. So I'm out here walking. I gotta tell you though, it's much better to do this with the one wheel. <laughs> I've done it already. As many of you guys can probably relate, yeah, I probably need some exercise right now. So, shoot a YouTube video, shoot some photos, have a good time, lose some weight. That's the goal. Yeah, I just realized I forgot to set focus on that. Hopefully that doesn't come out bad. I'm too focused on trying to get the framing and I forgot to set the focus. So this tree right here is an apple tree and it's like 200 plus years old. Here we go. 1826 and it recently died. Super sad. Not sure what's that gonna happen with it. Oh, looks like they might have planted something new in its place. Let's see if we can get some photos. All right, so took the last shot with the Instac Mini. We'll see how these turned out. There's a few of them I know already have turned out, not great, but I see the rest of them. All right, should I be doing this here? No, but I am, so deal with it. Let's look at these photos. First image up we got of the bridge. Not horrible, I think I've got the framing a little bit better than I had, but man, the framing of this camera is atrocious as you've already heard me say. Wow, I got a great picture of the ground. That didn't come out good at all. Here we go, this one's pretty good. This is the one I thought that wasn't gonna turn out that great because of the clouds and the sun bouncing off of it. It's actually pretty pretty good. Who song sign, I gotta say, if I had only got this frame, a little more to the right. This photo is freaking dope. I mean, that's pretty solid, except for the framing. All right, here we go. This is probably the best framed photo. It's of the main uh, restaurant building downtown Vancouver here. It's uh, by the waterfront, and uh, I was—I almost nailed it. 
I needed to come up a little bit. And I remember framing this photo like really high towards the top. But I gotta say, it's sharp. It, the colors are great. Way better than the Insect Mini 9, I would say. And yeah, I oh my god, this picture apparently is just impossible for me to shoot. Still wouldn't matter, the framing's bad. I missed the, the sign. One of these days, hopefully they'll tear out that tree. Oh my gosh, the train. Uh, this is the picture, it's, it's a little blurry. I thought I set the focus right, but I was wrong, but I, and the framing is completely off. However, I did get to what I wanted in frame. Look at that logo. Does that look familiar or what? Uh, I would probably need a whole other pack to really feel comfortable enough with this. This is my first pack shooting on the minis. It takes a lot of experience and a lot of practice to get the minis on this camera to look good. So is it worth it? I don't know, that's really up to you. All right, million dollar question. Is this something that you should pick up? Well, obviously it's up to your personal opinion and your choices for it. If you had to go pick up a square format instant camera that kind of does both, even with that mini back attachment, it's not that good. However, it does do both. This has got some awesome features. Just the fact alone that you have a remote, you can put this on a tripod and do long exposures. That's worth it to me right there. Some photographer friends of mine were like blown away and could not comprehend how I was able to get long exposures on instant film. It blew their minds. So that, that alone makes this really cool. I've been shooting on this for now a couple of months. This video has taken me quite some time to make and show you really about like how it holds up over time because there's lots of videos out there on this particular camera of just unboxing it or like first thoughts or just like an overall overview of this camera. But I want to do a little bit different deep <laughs> overview of real world use of this camera and I have no major complaints of this. Uh, I've been throwing this in and out of bags. The quality is plastic, but it, it's holding up really well. The only thing is, is this remote thing. It's, I'm gonna have to tape it in place. Otherwise I know I'm gonna lose it. But should you get this? Uh, I would say this is a must pick up if you are really wanting to take instant photography seriously. This is a serious camera, even though I'm never gonna probably use the mini back ever. I could have saved a couple of bucks and just gone for the regular square format version. But I didn't know that until I did this review. So I did that for <laughs> you guys. So if you have any questions, do you have one of these? Did I leave something out? Please leave some comments below. Let me know. What instant cameras are you using? Do you have anything else that you recommend? Leave some comments below as well. I would love to know because I'm diving deep in this. Real deep. <laughs> so stay tuned for some more instant photography related content and other fun goodness here on the Just Another Chris channel. So that's all I got for you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video, guys. See ya.